Hello, my name's Austin Jarrett from Alec Mowers. Today I want to talk to you about something that's very close to our heart at Alec Mowers, and that's thatch. Uh, I'm going to split this into three sections. I'm going to talk to you about what is thatch. I'm then going to talk briefly about why we don't want thatch. And then final section I want to talk to you about is the ways and things that we can do in order to reduce thatch. So, first of all, I'd like to talk to you about the thatch itself and what I've got here is uh, just a half moon and this grass actually isn't very thatchy at all it's very well looked after we're at, um, at a cricket club and if I cut through and take a slice you need to do this with your lawn so you can understand the profile of your lawn and um, once we get this sample out you'll be able to see what what I'm talking about so this is the profile of soil that we've just lifted out from this hole here and this is a good thing for you to do to understand what's going on in your soil profile. This isn't a very thatchy soil but actually what I'm going to do is I'm still going to recommend that they're going to do some thatch reduction program and what I'm talking about here is you can see the brown soil and it's not very closely defined but when I pull this off like this you can see there is a line here where there is organic matter before I get to the bottom of the grass plant and it's this organic matter here that I call thatch layer and this thatch layer is something that we don't want to see it in turf. This thatch layer is created quite naturally as part of the plant growing and renewing itself. So there are things in the crown of the plant, there are stolons and there are rhizomes which are runners which we want within our grass system because from those stolons and runners that run horizontally off come new shoots and new crowns to give us a nice thick sward like you can see we've got here. But what happens is they don't rot very quickly and as they die out and we get new stolons and new rhizomes and new growth in the plant sward then you end up with this very, uh, this thatch layer that forms uh, just above the soil level and below the plant height. So that is the thatch layer. Now, why don't we want that thatch layer? So I'm saying that if you have quarter of an inch, six millimeters of thatch, that's okay. If it goes up to half an inch thick, and this is over half an inch, three quarters of an inch, then you will, you really need to start working on your program. You can't eliminate this thatch overnight. It takes time to reduce it. That's what you need to be onto it as soon as it starts. If it's very thin, it's not a bad thing. It gives the lawn a little bit of cushioning uh, and it also prevents uh, evaporation when it gets very dry because it's like a mulch, it's like the bark mulch you put on a flower bed and the reasons you might try and uh, put that on to prevent moisture loss. But when it starts to become too deep, it causes all sorts of problems. So on a sports field, it would cause divots. It, the ground very easily, the, the turf very easily tears up. But really one of the big areas and the big problems that we have is that this thatch absorbs fertilizer and water and prevents it getting down into this root zone. You can see the soil's quite dry here because it actually acts just like a sponge and prevents it going down into the soil. This means that when the roots go down into the soil, they don't find the nutrients and the water that they need. And if you have a very thatchy lawn and you put fertilizer on it, you'll see the fertilizer has very little effect and that's because the thatch is absorbing it all. So that's not good for us. The other thing that happens is, as that thatch gets deeper, and you may do this and find four inches of thatch, that's quite easy to do, four inches of thatch or less, then what will happen is that the roots themselves will just sit where the moisture is, and the moisture always sits in the thatch and not in the soil. When it then goes dry in the summer, the thatch very quickly dries out, just like a coconut husk, the roots are all in the thatch, and so you end up with a very drought resist, a very uh, drought prone lawn. So as soon as it dries out, the roots are devoid of any moisture at all, and the grass dies back very quickly. Rather than a healthy lawn with no thatch and roots that go into the soil, they can go nice and deep, and that way they will find more moisture, and your lawn will be much more thatch, uh, drought resistant. So now I want to talk about how we actually reduce the thatch layer. And it's pretty much a mechanical exercise that we've got to do. We need to be cutting into that thatch a little bit at a time. As I say, we can't get rid of it all in one go. 
but what we want to do is gentle and aggressive at different times of year removal of the thatch. And in its very simplest format, this will be what we do it with. But if you have a lawn of any size, this is going to be hard work because this is about thatch reduction. By raking the grass, I can start to remove thatch and also introduce air into the thatch so that it's more likely to break down, rot down as well. I have to say we at Alec Mowers have come up with some other solutions in order to not only rake and um, mechanically remove the thatch, but also to collect it simultaneously to make this job much more exciting and give us much better results more quickly. So let me show you what Alec Mowers have done with their mowing system to help reduce thatch layers. This is my Alec mower. This is a Kensington 20, but there are various sizes of mower that are available. And you can look at other videos on our YouTube channel, which talk about these products in detail. What I can do with this machine is I can mow with a cylinder mower, which will be, give me the greatest lawn results. But because we need to keep in control in, of the thatch layers, even the most healthiest lawn, we need to stay in control of this then we have a range of implements here that will help us do this mechanically and easily. What we're able to do with this mower is we can take the cartridge out of the machine that is mowing and we can insert these different cartridges. And let me just briefly talk you through what these are able to do. So this is my vertical cartridge. This rotates in this direction. It's powered by the engine of the machine. And you can see they resemble sword blades. So what we're going to do with this vertical cartridge is vertically cutting, as the name would suggest, into the sward, and so it's cutting down into the thatch layer. What it's able to do then is remove thatch, but what it's doing is cutting the rhizomes and stolons to encourage new growth. So in much the same way you might prune a bush and you see new growth sprout out of the way you cut it, then that very much happens with uh, your lawn turf as well. So the vertical does that extremely effectively. The grass box is on the front of the machine, so as I cut, I collect as well. So I don't leave the lawn in a terrible mess. And if I only have time to do half of the lawn, then I've done it and everything's collected. I don't leave half the lawn in a mess. So that's the vertical cartridge. If I need to go deeper and get more aggressive, then what I have here is a de-thatcher cartridge. You can see this is a much more aggressive blade. It's hooked. It goes deeper and what this does is really go in and hook out thatch out of the cut that it makes. It takes a much bigger bite at a time. It will remove some of the plants and thin out the lawn altogether. I will more likely use this one either in springtime when I've got a lot of moisture and so the plants can recover. I will apply fertilizer again to help the plants recover and uh, I'll use it in autumn time as well when I know that I've got the moisture for the plants to be able to fight back uh, to this quite aggressive treatment. The other cartridge I've got is a much more gentle one. This is one of my favorite cartridges. This will be a about a little bit about little and often in terms of removing thatch. It will move dead leaves as well that are on the surface. That's when the ground has a, a brown, a grass has a browny look. I can uh, fetch out that material uh, and I can prevent material that is at the top from becoming thatch later so it's a preventative tool. This will also pick up leaves, pine needles and put those all into the grass box as well and those all help create quite an acidic feel to the to the grass as well which is, is not good in terms of depleting the the thatch layer that we have. But this one's a very versatile cartridge I can use it pretty much all year round because it leaves no damage to the sward like the two previous more aggressive cartridges. So this is the vertical cartridge I'm going to use first. Uh, so remember this is about cutting into the sward and cutting the stolons and the rhizomes. We will see some material come out as well. Very much depends on the thatch, the moisture of the day that you're actually doing the verticutting on as to how effective and how much material might come out. But uh, let's just see what goes on here. I'm going to leave the grass box off so you can see what's happening there. So I've changed the cartridge from the vertical now to the de-thatcher. It takes about two minutes. And this is the more aggressive blade, if you remember. And we're going to see now the difference in the material that we take out. I'm not going to put the grass box on again, just so that you can see what's happening. So finally, this is the scarifier cartridge. 
with the wire tines. Uh, so we're expecting to pick out lighter, more surface material with this, uh, dead leaves of grass that will become thatch if we don't keep looking after them and, and taking them out of the sward. So I'll leave the grass box off and let's see what comes out of this one. So this is the material that's come out of the grass boxes for each of these three turf cultivation cartridges that we've just used. And you can see the differences in the material. I cultivated the same area, different areas each time. So the piles are representative of the amount of material that was lifted out, i.e. The, the amount of thatch material that was lifted out. The vertical cartridge was the first one. You can see it's the smallest pile. Uh, there's brown material in there. And if you, you'd see it against the a uh, pile of grass clippings taken off the same area, that would look much greener and this has got a lot of more brown material in it. So we'd expect the smaller material because this cartridge is designed to slice into and cut the rhizomes and the stolons to get that new fresh growth going. So you can see that material. The darkest material is coming out of this dethatcher cartridge with the much more aggressive, bigger biting blade. And you can see there's actually almost entire plants that have come out uh, at the same time. But this material is really opening up the sward and allowing the, the thatch to degrade as well as pulling thatch out of the ground. And then finally, this lovely little scarifier cartridge with the little raking tines. A lot of grass clippings, rather brown grass leaves, which are loose and have been fetched out of the sward. Um, and it's keeping the sward clean and it's probably preventing the material becoming thatch as it works its way down the sward. So that's a good job done still. So you can see there's an armory of, of cultivation tools here for your lawn, all to be used at different times of year to create different effects to help us in this battle against thatch so we can achieve a really great lawn. So I hope this short video is of some use to you. Uh, if you need to know more information about when to scarify, when to dethatch, and when to lawn rake, then you can go to our website, which is www dot allet dot co dot uk where you'll find uh, a whole resource there available to you uh, thanks very much for listening